Many of us here receive prophecies. Good prophecies that we are talking about. Amen. Amen. How many of you received prophecy before? A good prophecy. Let me see your hand. You wave it. You have ever received a good prophecy from a man of God, a woman of God, a church brother, from a friend. So Let me see your hand. Wow. There are many hands. Amen. Amen. Let me see the hands. Maybe your prophecy has not yet been fulfilled. Let me see your hand. So, Hannah, the prophecy is not yet fulfilled. Let me see your hand. Um, you you wave it. Be, you see the many hands. Amen. Yes. You receive the prophecy from different, different men of God. Some, sometime, you receive a prophecy from this prophet. You meet this prophet. You confirm it. You say, oh, it's true. One man of God prophesied the same thing. You move to the third prophet. The prophet also say, you say, it's true. You are the third person prophesying this. Amen. Amen. But you don't understand why is it not manif uh, fulfilling. Amen. Amen. You are wondering. This prophet are prophesying. It's a, this one say they don't even know each other. Sometimes you receive a prophecy in a different region. You move to another region. The same prophecy come. But you are not seeing the manifestation, the fulfillment. There is something you need to do. That's what we are here to learn. Amen. Amen. If you have a jota, God bless you. Write down. Note. Take notes. It will help you. When you go back, you Amen. go through it. It will help you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Church or Nasa Okwa, what's I actually will be you? A Bebwao. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Between your prophecy and its fulfillment lies a battle. Uncom she any se a bebemuno. Spiritual conquest opposition. A kodia any hunam ni moja. Demonic resistances. The day you receive a good prophecy, war is declared in the spirit world. War is declared. The day God used his servant to say it, oh, I'm about giving you three cars, bright news. And you will build five hotels, amen, mm. in different region of this nation. Ha! That very day, battle has started. Yes. That very day, battle has started between the prophecy and its fulfillment. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. You receive a prophecy. Early next year, you are going to marry, and your wedding is going to be glorious. Even on your wedding day, somebody will come and dash you a new car as a wedding gift. Ha! You have received it. Battle has started. The devil will rise up to fight it. Listen to this very careful. This message will help you, your prophecy, to come into fulfillment. Amen. The good prophecy is the same as a good dream that you had. The good dream. You sleep, you have a good dream. It's the same thing. Your good dream, your good prophecy are God's promises unto you. He promised, I will do this for you. They are God's promises. But when God promised you, the devil will rise to attack it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So if you have never received a prophecy, good prophecy, but you have a good dream, is the same thing we are dealing with now. You ask yourself, why is it that any time that you have a bad dream, that one, it manifests. It doesn't keep long. If you don't pray to stop it, you see it come true. But the good one, you will wait for it. 
If you pray and don't even pray well, you see that it doesn't even manifest. What you hold that in tia so soon that you're born here a bem then so soon that a papa dia a check and sana bad. It's the same thing. You receive a negative prophecy and it's bad. You don't deal with it. That one it will come. You see it manifests very fast than the good one. That is where you will know that there is a warfare in the spirit realms. For Satan come to kill, to destroy, to steal. That is his mission. So when God promises you something good, that one he will fight it. But if the thing he said a, a revelation is exposed that something bad is about to happen. It is orchestrated from the devil. So that one, he will do everything possible to make sure this one it happen. He will not attack it, he will not block it because he is the one doing it. So he will make a way free, let this thing happen. But when you see that it's coming from God, God is going to bless his people, he will stand there like this to block it. So but some that's why. Hallelujah. Amen. And that is what happened that your bad dreams come through very fast. But good ones, mm -mm. your bad prophecy come very fast. But the good ones, you are waiting for them, you are not seeing. And any idea, any hallelujah amen praise the lord hallelujah now listen we are looking at five ways or five keys by which to enforce your good prophecy or good dream to come into fulfillment so this one i want you to write it down amen Amen. Amen. It will help you. Five ways or five keys by which to enforce one's prophecy or good dream to come into fulfillment. Number one is faith. You need faith. When you receive a good prophecy, you need faith. You have a good dream. You need faith to see it come into fulfillment. When you receive a good prophecy, you doubt it. You cannot see the fulfillment. But if you receive a bad prophecy, you doubt it. It will be fulfilled. That's the difference. Amen. 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 For bad one, whether you believe you doubt, it doesn't matter. You have to do something to stop it. If not, it will happen. But yeah. the good one, if you doubt it, you'll spoil the whole thing. It can't come again. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Listen to something. When you receive a good prophecy, that early next year, February, yeah. You are going to marry. You are very happy. You are rejoicing. You say, wow, in fact, I'm, I have faced a lot of disappointment. I have struggled. But finally, God has spoken. Finally, God has spoken. That I'll be marrying next year, February. You are happy. And maybe... Maybe the day you are receiving the prophecy, you have a girlfriend. So when the prophecy comes, you say, ah, it means that this my relationship, this one, yeah, it will turn into marriage. Listen to something. Why you need the faith? Because Satan attacks every good time. If you say, but some was why you need the faith? The, 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 the devil can play your tricks. He operate through deception. He can deceive you. If you don't have the faith, you will lose the fulfillment of that prophecy. So at that time, the devil will make sure your girlfriend will tell you, 
We can't continue this again. I'm no longer interested. She will leave you. And at that time, Sam Breno, you see that. Ah, but I've received prophecy next year, February. Why this relationship break? That's the time you now need faith. Sam Breno, if you don't have faith, you will give up. The time you realize. You see, this man of God has not seen well. Maybe this is a fake prophecy. The devil is playing you tricks. But want your girlfriend leave you. But you say, God, I know you cannot lie to me. You cannot lie. Are you getting me? You still hold on to that faith. You believe that. God is removing this lady. Maybe she's not the right person. I don't want you to enter into a wrong marriage because you are about marrying early next year. So you go. Are you getting me? So that the new one can come. So you will not delay your time. But if you don't have faith, you'll be worried, down, sad. You lose everything. And she may even be the right person for you to marry. But because Satan wants to attack the prophecy, he will play that trick for the lady to be to just take some kind of offense. The gentleman to take some kind of offense and walk away. But the thing, if you have faith, the walking away is a while. It's, she's walking away, but to come back. Are you getting me? But Satan will make it that, oh, you see now, she has gone. You don't have the faith. Your faith dropped. She can't come back again. Yes. The moment your faith now drops, she cannot come back again. Disappointment has come. You need faith. I don't And see, a bit me about say, only a corner cry, oh, Jaw, or Hakono. Or your no one and your one, she said, I was all worried. No. But in Tawantawa, we be back. Emma, what do you answer, son? What way you are about you say? Praise the Lord. Say neighbor, you need faith. And listen to something. You can destroy your own faith. You can kill your own faith without knowing. How do you destroy your own faith? That is when you program your mind how God will answer you. When you program your mind how God will answer you, you can, you can destroy your faith. You receive a prophecy. You'll be traveling abroad. And you just program your mind. Now you are say, Oh, I have an auntie there. Oh, I know she's the one that will take me. There. That is where your mind is. Maybe you used to every week you hear from your auntie, you oh. call WhatsApp or chatting. Now after the prophecy, you, you send message, you. Auntie, no reply, call, no respond. You now say, hey, the devil has come again. This thing too has spoiled like that. And they God tell you that it's your auntie that will take you up. You have programmed your mind that you way. So you destroy your faith. Don't program your mind how God will do it. The Bible said the thought of God are not our thought. They are higher than our own. His ways are higher than our ways. I prophesy, oh, you receive money. Oh, my You say, Amen. And when you are receiving amen. amen, it is an uncle you have seen. Well, you are mine. Because you have some rich uncle in the family. You are receiving amen and your mind is clicking to the uncle. Amen. You will give me this money. Amen. 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 Amen.
Oh, na. God want to pass it through that you meet somebody you don't even know to give you that money. But it can't happen. The prophecy can no longer come through because you have destroyed your faith. You have given up. And it, the person that God will want to bring the money will not show up again. So, if you say, why 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 you some people, even when they come to healing, some people, you know, healing, it can either you lay your hands and pray, you speak a word, anything, God can take your sickness away. But some of you program your mind that the man of God has to lay his hands on the place that is highly affected so that my healing will come. Now the man of God come, you don't place hand on that affected part. Just say, you are healed in Jesus' name. You say, mm -mm. Healing has come. You see, the healing will not come. I am ambassador. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Turn to your neighbor and say, Never leave you for God. He is God. You can't understand this God. When he promised you, so show don't try to figure out how he will do it. Or where he will pass. You can't understand. His ways are past finding. Love for Jesus. Love for Jesus. Praise the Lord. Amen. Amen. You need faith to receive your prophecy into fulfillment. So, Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. I read that ye be not slothful, but full of faith. Hebrews chapter 6 verse 12. But followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Who through faith and patience inherit the promise. That ye be not slothful, but followers of them who through faith and patience inherit the promise. Who through what? Faith. Who through what? Faith. faith. It's through faith you will obtain the promise. The promise there is talking about the prophecy. That good prophecy that you have received. God is promising you. Come, Papa, now. Amen. Amen. The moment you doubt it. You can't obtain the promise again. Two. Number two key of enforcing your prophecy into fulfillment is prayer. Say prayer. Prayer. Say prayer. Prayer. Say prayer. prayer. Amen. Amen. First Timothy chapter one verse eighteen. Timothy First Timothy chapter one verse eighteen. Timothy, you say, this church I commit unto thee, son Timothy. This is the apostle Paul that is here. Amen. Amen. You say, this church I commit unto thee, son Timothy, according to the prophecies which went before on thee, that thou, that thou by them mightiest war, a good warfare. Hallelujah. Amen. A good what? Warfare. Mightiest, a good warfare. He's talking about prayer. And warfare prayer. When you receive the prophecy, I told you earlier that war is declared. The devil will fight it. So you need to rise up in fervent prayer and thank God. Amen. Amen. That our response to our slogan is what? Fervent prayer is the key. Praise the Lord. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of the righteous availed much. You need a fervent prayer. Use the prophecy. And listen, any prophecy that comes from God through the Holy Spirit is in agreement with the scriptures. Any prophecy that is not in agreement with the word of God is fake. It's not coming from the Lord. Every prophecy from God through his servant to you is in agreement with the word of God. That's why you, you have that right 
to judge a prophecy whether it is coming from God or it's just coming from man or it's coming from the devil and I say if you born some chain neighbor. Hallelujah. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So when you receive a prophecy concerning marriage, there are scriptures that are supporting that. So when you are using the prophecy to pray, stand on those scriptures. Stand on those scriptures. They are scriptures. You receive a prophecy that the Lord has healed you. God said, I should tell you that you are healed. There are scriptures in agreement of healing. You have received the word. Where you go, stand on those scriptures to pray. You are warring with the prophecy. By his stripes, I am healed. Amen. Amen. His word says in Jeremiah that he will restore health unto me. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So you stand on that to pray your prophecies. So the two, number two key of enforcing your prophecy into fulfillment is true prayer. So let me read it from NIV. He said, Timothy, my son, I give you this instruction in keeping with the prophecies once made about you, so that by following them you may fight the good fight. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Number three key is sacrifice. Sacrifice. Listen to something. When you receive a prophecy, don't let it go that way without sacrificing to secure it. Don't let that prophecy go without what? Sacrificing. Sacrifice is very important to secure the prophecy and to enforce its fulfillment. When you receive the prophecy that you are going to have twins, now you need to sacrifice, or you are going to have triplets, you need to what? You need to sacrifice to it. I told you. If not, forces of darkness have heard the prophecy. It will shock you. Some of them will go a long way to offer demonic sacrifice on wicked altars to counter-attack the prophecy. So what we are Say, eh, we hear that she received a prophecy. He has received a prophecy that this is what God wants to do for her. This is what God wants to do for him. Now they will take your that prophecy to shrines. They offer demonic sacrifice to make sure you never see it come true. They will not come and tell you, eh, this is what we are doing. So if you don't offer any sacrifice let me tell you there are even sacrifice will succeed it will succeed it is in the bible one prophet gave a prophecy to God's children when they were going to battle a prophet prophesied God said he is with you he will grant you victory over your enemies oh so they went for the battle. They believe this is a true prophet. And the message is from God. And the message was from God. They went to battle. But they saw the opposite. And when they were targeting, when they were about to kill him, that enemy they were targeting very. This. Man, he went and 
took his first son his first son this is a king I'm talking about so the one that will succeed him his first son that will succeed him he took him and sacrificed him evil sacrifice evil sacrifice to counter attack the prophecy that was given to them declaring victory he sacrificed his firstborn and the bible said after the sacrifice a great indignation rose among the israelites god's children great what indignation they became very bitter angry confused they get they left the man they don't know what happened confusion came they became very angry they could not explain and they left the man and that prophecy failed Meanwhile, it's from God. So you can receive a good prophecy. Some wicked people can go and offer demonic sacrifice to stop it. Listen, when See, they were going to battle, the prophecy that came went and do some two by four sacrifice. Two by four are for the ball. Sacrifice is not some sacrifice should sacrifice. And then they are Amen. You should feel it. I will say a count. It's not something small you just do and say, ah, this and yeah, be a no friend no for no a no 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 This man, his only only son that will succeed him. He took him. So anyway, Obama. How did Satan get to know this? The devil doesn't have anything original. He only has the counterfeit and the photocopy. He copied from God. He knew that God moved by sacrifices. And sacrifices carried power. So he copied. That is why many of our brothers that are in the world that don't know Christ, there is no struggle or visit that they will not demand sacrifice. There is no wicked place you will visit that they will not demand sacrifice. The devil moved by it because he know there is power in that. He, he photocopied that one from God. But that is why we, children of God, we should know this. I will see you they did the sacrifice small no power it doesn't have any value. value so that that man wicked sacrifice over power that yeah, they are small sacrifice and they could not kill him and so, so the prophecy, prophecy failed these are deep spiritual things god promised abraham I will make you a father of all nations. Now, he brought forth a son, Isaac. And God said, Sacrifice him. Because God saw that for this my promise. Of making you the father of the nation, there must be a sacrifice. I will say for this prophecy, this promise to come into fulfillment. So God, though testing, Abraham, but he wants to see his heart. Will he agree to sacrifice? Will he obey? So, Betia. Unfortunately, on Abraham's side, he obeyed. Abraham, yes, he took his only son. Uh, you say you make me a father of many nations. Now I have only one child. You say. Me, yes, in Nigeria, me babe mama for your Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. And when he obeyed, it moved God. Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 Genesis chapter 22 verse 2 Genesis chapter 22 the verse 2 Amen Amen Are we there? Yes. Genesis 22 verse 2 Listen he said And he said 
take now thy son, thy only son. Say thy only. Thy only. When you hear only, only, that is the sacrifice there. Because you, the only thing you have, you are giving it out. Hey, Ubabe sacrifice. Thy only. Amen. Amen. Thy only son Isaac, whom thou lovest, that thing that you love, Amen. 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 That thing that you love, you cherish the most. When you give it out, it's a sacrifice. Say, whom thou lovest, and get thee into the land of Moriah, and offer him there. Amen. 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 For a burnt offering upon one of the mountains, which I will tell of thee. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Let me take it from NLT, NLT version. He said, Take your son, your only son, yes, Isaac, whom you love so much, and go to the land of Moriah. Sacrifice him there as a burnt offering on one of the mountains, which I will point out to you. Hmm. And listen. And when he did that, Abraham obeyed. And let's now go to the verse 16. Because he obeyed, Abraham obeyed. This is the result here. Though God turned the whole thing into a strong lamb, and he did use that one, but because of the obedience to sacrifice his holy son, this is what he said. And he said, by myself have I sworn. God has looked around. Who should I swear? He said, no, myself. I will swear by myself, the all-powerful God. He said, by myself have I sworn, say as the Lord. For because thou hast done this thing, and hast not withheld thy son, thy only son, verse 17. That in blessing I will bless thee, and in multiplying I will multiply thy seed at the stars of the heaven, and as the sun which is upon the east shore, and thy seed shall possess the gate of his enemies. Clap for Jesus because of sacrifice. A dear Abraham, Oh, what did you or did be ya? Mama Abraham, I did say, I said, no, but can I no cry? Into a sim, I come me 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 hunt him. Me di me me hunt him, I come me hunt him. Said the way you inti, you inshiremu, I na me shirau. Me mama was here, door it is simple and one year. Hallelujah. And because of the sacrifice, now the promises of God came into fulfillment in Abraham's life, and we are all his descendants, the descendants of Abraham. Clap for Jesus for that. It came to pass. He really made him the father of many nations. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Say, I am a descendant of Father Abraham. Yeah, Abraham has seen him. Yes. So that is a prophecy. We are the prophecy of Abraham that manifested. He received it. He obeyed the voice. He did a sacrifice. And it came into fulfillment. So sacrifice is needed. Amen. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Verse 18. He said that what? And in thy seed shall all the nations of the earth be blessed because thou hast obeyed my voice. Because thou hast obeyed my voice. When you are sacrificing, it's an obedience to God's voice. Amen. I promise you, you sacrifice. You have obeyed my voice yes. and I have fulfilled my promise for you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. So I told you good dream and good prophecy, they are just the same. So when you have a good dream, now you have good dream, it's not happening. When you have a good dream, very good dream, what you do it? When you get up, sacrifice into that dream. So soon die, papa. And I say when you come papa. But for you. Keys should come together for you to get the results. Only prayer without faith, without the sacrifice. Mm. So, 
Something happened some time ago. I gave a prophecy to somebody. And someone went and sacrificed. And will be called yeah for a book is here. Not, not bad sacrifice or in the, inside the church. The person oh, went and sow a seed to tap into that prophecy. So the thing manifested in that person's life. The one who received the prophecy never received anything. My God. You see how powerful sacrifices. She is tapping it and sacrificing to tapping it. It happened to her. But the one who received it, no sacrifice, it never happened. So these are the difference now. Sacrifice. Aforebo. It's very important. And she came and shared her testimony. He said the prophet prophesied to my <laughs> and I went and tapped it by sowing a seed. So the thing happened to me. <laughs> Sacrifice is powerful. Amen. Amen. Now we are going to the four key the the four way way of enforcing your prophecy or good dream into fulfillment. So the number four key is waiting. 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 Waiting, waiting required patience and patience required endurance. Amen. The Bible says in Habakkuk chapter 2, verse 3, it says, For the vision is yet for an appointed time, but at the end it shall speak and not lie. Though it tarry, wait for it. Wait for it. Waiting. You must wait. Amen. Amen. Because I tell the day you receive the prophecy, in fulfillment, there are a lot of obstacles, resistances, every amen. amen. You must endure that period. Wait and believe that your God cannot let you. He said, Though it tarry, wait for it, it shall not lie. If you are impatient, so <laughs> your prophecy cannot come true. If you are impatient, what will happen is that doubt will come in. So uh, the thing is not happening. happening. Is it even true? It's not happening. It's not happening. Doubt has come like that. And when the doubt comes in, the faith is no more there. You have lost the faith. And you have lost the prophecy that way. Now we in an aircon. Uh, anyway, this man of God, oh, Professor, ah, why is it not still happening? Hmm? Amen. Amen. Let's go to Hebrews chapter 6, verse 15. Hebrews 6, 15. Hebrews 6, verse 15. He's referring to still our father Abraham there. Listen, Hebrews 6, verse 15. He said that, and so after he had passed through the land of Canaan, he said that, Hebrews 6, 15. He said that, and so after he had patiently endured. He obtained the promise after he has patiently endured. He obtained the promise. Amen. Amen. You need to wait. So change. For waiting, you must be patient. You you must so you so you by that, that, you obtain the promise. The prophecy will come true. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Amen. The last key, number five. Believe your prophet. Believe the vessel that God passes through to deliver the message to you. Believe. If God has sent me to come and deliver his message to you, his promise to you, 
and I come and deliver you don't believe me. It can't come true. The moment you start doubting me, so, embrace, best start, say, any you word that, that I carry from God to you, I simply am every thing I may have be. I want to become powerless. It can't do anything. It can't come true. So that is why the enemy use a lot of deception strategies. He can let the one God sent to you hmm, to change your story. He make sure that you doubt a person. It's because of these things the devil is doing that. You see that men of God have been criticized. Some people fake things against them on the internet, saying a lot of negative things about them. Is the enemy doing that so that you, that, that man of God, is sent to? The messages of God, his blessings to you cannot work. You will not believe. You want to kill your belief toward the man of God. So that God can no longer pass through him to bless you. Listen to something. There are many, countless of men of God on earth and women of God. Many men of God, many women. But there is always one particular man of God or woman of God, God will send to you. Everybody on earth, you have a prophet, a pastor or apostle that have been sent by God to you. Everybody. Everybody. As I'm standing, I have a prophet God sent to me. I have a man of God God sent to me, even though I'm a servant. Everybody. And the one that God sent to me also have someone God sent him to. So Satan will make sure you will not believe the one God sent to deliver you. Some people You see, what Moses first wanted to deliver the Israelites. Moses caused to Israel for free Egypt. He, def he, he defended them by killing one of the Egyptians. But because the Israelite man did not believe Moses. Oh yes, sir. Say the bear. Omunji Moses in the trouble. He wanted to expose the whole thing, and Moses has to take to his heel. He ran. He have to run because the belief wasn't there. You don't believe that this man is really your deliverer. God is sent to deliver you people. He doesn't believe. He said, who are you to be our judge? Do you want to kill me the way you killed that Egyptian brother yesterday? Huh? No, this you thing is there, you have to run. So when he returned there again, he saw that now many of the Israelites believe that this man is a deliverer. It was only some three wicked families that were just troubling him. Abraham, Korah, and Datan. They didn't believe. But because they don't believe, they died. Their elf swallowed them and their children, families, everything, properties. They went down. Amen. So everybody has. So believe. The Bible says, in Second Chronicles chapter 20, verse 20, he said, Believe the Lord your God, so shall you be established. Believe his prophet, and you will prosper. Believe his prophet, and you will prosper. What does that mean? When you believe the prophet, he carries God's word to you, God's promises to you. They will come into fulfillment. You will succeed, you will prosper, you will make it. But if you don't believe, they will come and deliver it. It will not work. So in India, so Kenya man of God that have ever given you a good prophecy and you turn against that vessel, if the prophecy have not yet fulfilled, forget it. You can't get it again. man of God ever give you a good prophecy through God and now you are no longer in talking terms. You are taking grudge. You are fighting the man of God, the woman of God. If that prophecy have not come to pass, it can't come again. That offense will affect it. Yes. Yes. 
That is how it is. Not These are spiritual things, not physical. That's why you should guide your heart. Amen. Amen. You should what? Guide your heart. That the devil will not corrupt it. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. One time I went to meet one of my fathers in the prophetic in Nigeria. And where I was staying, some people close by they will be there criticizing, saying, I have to move away. So that they will not pollute my mind and affect my heart. And when that thing happened, I will go there in vain. I will go to Nigeria and come back nothing. So the enemy was using a strategy to do that. But I have to. I have to guide my heart. Avoid them. It's not everyone that comes to church is from God. When God's children went to present themselves before the Lord. The enemy came among them. In Job chapter 1 verse 6. Yes. So, so some will come to corrupt your heart, your belief toward the vessel so that you can't receive anything and you will all be the same. You see that it's true this man or God things are working well for you. They will do whatever they will do to make sure that you will not believe the man of God. You will not like him or her. So it can be that your friend will suddenly develop hatred towards your man of God, or your woman of God trying to influence you that you should also have that hatred. That man of God may not send to you, but may be sent to you. So the enemy is right to do that. Your your heart to block your blessings. It's a strategy. You need to know the spiritual things. Amen. 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 There were some people that that the TV Joshua, his it blessed was memory, were sent to. But the enemy corrupted their mind towards him that they could not go to him for that blessing before he finished the flame ministry. You see now, there were some people that he was sent to. But because of this, some of them allowed people to deceive them, corrupt their heart toward the man. They see that this man is fake, so that they cannot get to him to get that blessing God wants to give them. Now he's no more. He has finished his ministry. And such people may die without fulfilling their destinies. Because the one that God sent to help you to fulfill their destiny, he has not released a blessing to you, and he is gone. He is gone. So you will just be there. You can visit different men of God. Still, that blessing cannot be released because they were not the one God put the blessing in the hand to give. So that is how it is. You need to understand these things. Amen. Amen. Number five key is what? Believe your prophet. Believe the vessel that God has given you. Defend the very, very well. Because well, that is where you would think, let anybody pollute. Defend it. Amen. Rise up to your feet. God bless you. Clap for Jesus for the message.